So if you walk into a meeting room, a conference room, a presentation, and you do not elicit an emotion into those who, who are listening, you will not move them. You will not make them take a decision. They will nod. They will smile. They will sign. They will walk out of there and something else will attract their emotion and boom, they're off in that direction. <laughs> One of your other famous TEDx talks is the death of the PowerPoint. And when we think <laughs> about presenting in business, we think about presenting on stage, oftentimes we are using a PowerPoint. And yep. we do change our view of sharing stories and connecting with the audience when there's slides behind us and there's words on the screen. So mm -hmm. we talked a little bit earlier about this. It is no different, whether you're telling stories personally, whether you're telling stories at a networking event, or even you're on stage, we need to be eliciting emotions in the audience. We want their attention. We want their focus. How can we do that when PowerPoint is involved? Yeah, good point. All right. So I would say that you can still kick ass with dopamine. Uh, so a couple of quick tips is the following. Um, imagine that you bring out a slide and you go, uh, Okay, this one. Ah, we could probably skip this one. Oh, no. Oh, I know you can't really read what's on it. But uh, yeah, so uh, I'll just point here. Yeah, that's a bad way of, <laughs> of delivering a slide. Okay, so that is bringing the dopamine down to to the floor. Now, a better way, the magical way of delivering a slide is what I call sell your slide. And it goes like this. Just prior to delivering the slide, you go, ah, oh, guys, girls, the next slide coming up is my personal favorite. It summarizes everything in such a beautiful way. So just hold on to your seats. Here we go. Boom. And the dopamine is sky high. People go like, <laughs> can't do that every single time. Can't go like next slide is my personal favorite they'll, they'll carry you away if you do that for more than like <laughs> two slides but you can still sell slides you can go like okay so we've had, we've had a look at the theory let's have a look at a super exciting example of how this works and then you bring that out so <clears throat> dopamine can be used by selling stories uh, selling slides sorry yeah so that's one there's so many ways to create dopamine in PowerPoint, but I right. don't know how much you want me to talk about it, but that's one key way. Well, that's a great example. Are there yeah. other emotions in, in your PowerPoint that you feel are important? Yeah, yeah absolutely. The second one would be just value everything that you say. You know, like you go like, oh, look at this number. That's a bit worrisome. Ah, oh, I hate this number. Look at this. This excites the heck out of me. Do you see that number? That's 86. It's incredible. When you go like, ooh. I don't know, you know, I'm feeling really, really bothered by this number. This is really getting to me. And it's the end of the month. I don't know. So yeah, value your numbers because every single time you do that, you transfer your emotion to the people listening. And hmm, you know what? Can we, is it okay to just do a quick experiment with you two guys? Yeah, sure, of yeah. course. Okay. And, and of course, you, who, you who's listening as well. Do the same thing. Okay, so grab a pen and paper. Do you have a pen and paper, guys? Or do you have anything to... Yeah, we have some notes here you've, we can write on. You have pads, okay. Yeah. All right, and you as a listener as well, grab a pen and paper. Write down the, um, let's see, the three last things that you've purchased, just spontaneously. Three last things that you've purchased. Okay. So it can be, can be water, it can be a car, a jet plane. Candy, <laughs> hamburger. I'll just give you a moment to write that down. All right. So we could make this list like 30 items long, but three is enough. All right. Now I <laughs> just discussed you two guys in between each other. Yeah. What what drove those decisions? You have three options to to pick between. Either it was instincts that drove those decisions, or it was emotions, or it was logic. So three things. You can pick one of those. What drove those decisions? Instinct, emotion, and logic. And while you two guys do it, you who's, you who's listening, do it as well. So discuss what drove those decisions. All right. So AJ, you want to start with yours? Yeah. Should I identify the objects? 
Yeah. Okay. So swimsuit was emotional. Okay. Coffee was instinctual. And uh, so was tofu. All right. Um, protein bar was instinctual. Water was <laughs> instinctual. And uh, uh, beer was just needed at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's pure emotion, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's fascinating, you, did, you guys did really well. And, and it's a thumbs up on all those good answers. Uh, but what's interesting is when I do say that I've got an audience of a thousand people, I'm delivering a keynote for them and I ask this question. So everyone in the audience, they write down three things and then they get to discuss exactly this. It is 40% of the audience who come to the conclusion that you two guys came to. 60% of the audience believe that their decisions are rational and logical. Right, but the conclusion of this is, and you who are listening, the conclusion is this, that every single decision you've taken in your entire life, and you will take for the rest of your life, every single decision is driven by emotion or instinct. There are no exceptions. And so why I'm saying this and why I just wanted to jump into this is because you guys, you're talking about emotion and we're talking about, about the signaling substance and hormones. Mm -hmm. why, this, why this is absolute core, why this is more important than anything is because if you walk into a meeting room, a conference room, a presentation, and you do not elicit an emotion into those who, who are listening, you will not move them. You will not make them take a decision. They will nod. They will smile. They will sign. They will walk out of there, and something else will attract their emotion, and boom, they're off in that direction. If you fail to create that, you fail to move people. And that is why emotion in PowerPoint is so important, and that is why these signaling substances are so important to people. But I feel alive